Ladies and gentlemen, the following segment of the podcast is presented exclusively by Hillsdale College. For over 175 years, four purposes have defined Hillsdale's mission, learning, character, faith, and freedom. Thank you for listening and my sincere appreciation to our brothers and sisters at Hillsdale for their great sponsorship. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin. Our number is 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. You know, I... I listened to some of this hearing. I didn't watch it live. But I listened to some of it literally in the last hour or so. And um, tremendous amount of drama. A lot of graphics. Adam Kingsinger was crying. Liz Cheney said, sometimes you have to pick country over party. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is really uh, too bad. Quite the spectacle. That this committee is loaded up the way it is. We have Adam Schiff on this committee. Who led an insurrection against the Trump administration. You have this guy Raskin from Maryland on this committee. Who pushed for impeachment twice. Then you have Cheney, who's always hated Trump. Her father's always hated Trump. The Bushes have always hated Trump. And then of course you have Kingsinger who lied to the people in his district when he ran as a Tea Party candidate, flipped into rhino land, and has always hated Trump. Didn't vote for Trump. Now, we had some police officers giving testimony. I don't condemn them. But we only had certain police officers giving testimony. You don't have police officers giving testimony so far who let people into the Capitol building. Maybe, maybe they will be questioned. You don't have FBI officials being brought into this hearing. Maybe they will in the future. Explaining why they failed to provide information to the police officers when they had it 48 hours earlier. You don't have any answers right now why Nancy Pelosi and nobody in leadership accepted Donald Trump's offer of 10,000 National Guardsmen. You don't have anybody testifying there from any of the police organizations across America talking about how the Democrats, Pelosi, and the others have undermined law enforcement all around the country. You don't have any police officers testifying about what took place in Portland. Nobody's testifying about what took place at the White House. Nobody's testifying about what's happened to the New York Police Department or any of these other police departments. Only certain cops are testifying because they push a narrative. Of course they testified truthfully. But this is cherry picking. At no time before January 6th and well after the summer of riots did Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats hold any hearings about the war on cops. At no time when she called federal law enforcement at the Portland Courthouse, stormtroopers, when Clyburn, the number three Democrat, called federal law enforcement stormtroopers. Wasn't fashionable to support the cops back then. At no time did the Democrats have a hearing about how the cops are being abused and assaulted. At no time. Who was doing the assaulting? Black Lives Matter, Antifa. Who defended the attacks on the cops? Every big city mayor. Every damn one of them. And their city council. And now when you bring up, oh, this is a diversion, you see. It's a diversion to bring that up. It's a diversion. It's a diversion to Washington, D.C., because when things happen in their communities, it matters. When it happens in somebody else's community, it's a diversion. You see people having the crap beaten out of them on the streets of New York? Old ladies, old men, just brutalized? Like they're not even human beings? 
Meanwhile, one person was killed on January 6th. I'm not talking about what happened in a heart attack and so forth. One person was killed. And she was a 100% peaceful protester. She didn't hurt anybody while she was trespassing. Really? And now you're going you're gonna to defend Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all the rest of them? <clears throat> she was trespassing. She wasn't hurting a soul. And somebody, some officer, shot through the window or shot through the door indiscriminately and killed her. And now the cover-up is on. Who is it? Well, we have some leaks. We're not sure. Where's the hearing on that? Nothing. Nothing. Diversion, they call this. Diversion. The media is still all in. Insurrection. We spend billions of dollars in taxpayer dollars. Investigations, investigations, congressional investigations. We turn the Congress. We turn the Congress, particularly in the House, into an arm of the Democrat Party where they wouldn't stop with their subpoenas and their hearings and their threats against a president and his family and the administration. That's an insurrection. That's incitement. We hear it now with the things the Democrats say about other people with whom they disagree. Listen, listen to Biden. You're for Jim Crow? Jim Crow? Incitement. We have organizations in this country that the Democrat Party supports. They paint their names on their boulevards. Which tells you they're Marxists and they want to overthrow the government. Have you heard any testimony about that? Have you seen any witnesses about that? Not a damn one. Billions of dollars in mayhem. Real people killed. Not one damn hearing. Not one. Sorry, but this is really, it's like this coronavirus. They want you to believe it's Trump supporters who won't be vaccinated. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But look at the statistics. Recent immigrants in this country from developing nations of the third world are very, very hesitant to be vaccinated. For a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. Maybe because they listened to Biden and Kamala Harris early on. But here's what I know is a matter of fact, as I've been pointing out now day after day after day. Here's what I know is a matter of fact. We have no idea how many illegal aliens have been vaccinated. They haven't even been tested. They haven't even been tested. They're being moved all around the country without without even contacting local and state governments to let people know about it. So into the shadows, as the left likes to say, or the, or the open borders group likes to say, into the shadows they go, never to be found again. So you're not going to be able to test them. You're not going to be able to suggest they get vaccinated. You don't even know who they are. You don't even know where they are. So tonight they're telling us, if you've been vaccinated, you're to wear a mask inside. The problem is not the people who've been vaccinated. The problem is not the gun owners who are law-abiding. So as I said the other day, and as I wrote in Liberty and Tyranny years ago, illegal aliens get a health pass. They get a health pass. While we prepare for more lockdowns. How many illegal aliens were, were vaccinated? I have a question for the President of the United States. How many have the virus? How many have the Delta variant? How many have been tested? They don't know, they don't know. Answer, they don't know, they don't know, and they don't know again. And that's fine, because it serves their politics. They don't give a damn. They use these people, as they use all people, minorities. They use them. 
they cared about their health, what's going on in the southern border wouldn't be going on in the southern border. And by the way, it's just not people of Hispanic ancestry coming through the southern border. It's people from all over the world. The Far East, the Middle East, Africa, every corner of the world. They figured it out. America's open. The vast majority of these countries do not have a vaccine. They cannot afford the vaccine. These are poor people. They don't have vaccines. Most of them have not been vaccinated. And I continue to bang the pots and pans on this issue. And I'll continue to bang the pots and pans on this issue. Until every one of my colleagues on TV and radio is banging the pots and pans on this issue. We got a good start, I might add. But this administration puts ideology before science. It puts ideology before medicine. While they claim the opposite. This administration is is populated by morons and ideologues. Not rural America. Joe Biden campaigned against the vaccines. Now he inherited three of them. Three of them. And he can't convince enough people, he argues, to take it. A little harder than you thought, isn't it, Joe? Donald Trump walked into office. There was nothing. No PPEs, no ventilators. Obviously, no therapeutics and no vaccines. They had to make it from the bottom up. And every step of the way, Joe Biden was sitting on his ass in the basement chewing on his false teeth that Donald Trump is responsible for these deaths and Donald Trump's responsible for those deaths. And now he's pushing hard the vaccine that was developed while Donald Trump was president of the United States. And no, not by you, Fauci. Quack, quack. Not by you. In spite of you. But there is no explanation for this border being open other than raw, disgusting, inhumane politics. And what did I say the other day? Where's the CDC? The CDC's been issuing fiat after fiat. Well, why isn't the CDC issuing a fiat secure the border, close the border as a national health emergency? Where's that fiat? Where's that order? It's not coming. And any jerk that regurgitates what I just said, and you know, they're very good listeners to this program. All right, there's a lot more to say about a lot more, so I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I know you love freedom. Now, how do I know that? Because you listen to my show, and my show and everything I do is about preserving freedom and the form of government that secures it for us. It's the same with Hillsdale College, one of the very best truly liberal arts colleges in the nation. Hillsdale's committed to pursuing truth and defending liberty. Hillsdale teaches students to defend freedom no matter what they major in. Hillsdale teaches them how to defend liberty. And they do that for you, too, through their free monthly digest of constitutional thought called Imprimus. 5.7 million Americans receive Imprimus for free every month, and you can subscribe for free at levinforhillsdale.com. No strings attached. Generous donors who want to preserve freedom for future generations make it possible for Hillsdale to send in Primus to you free every month. Start receiving in Primus to learn how to defend the freedom you love. Visit levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. Let me tell you what's going on in this administration. They've embraced every one of these Marxist movements, American Marxist movement. This is Latcrit. Latcrit preaches there really is no such thing as the United States sovereignty because America is bigger than just the United States. Besides, they argue, United Statians are the real interlopers. That's you. Those crossing the border by the hundreds of thousands are the actual indigenous Americans. The Democrat Party hopes to benefit from embracing the movement as it counts on wave after wave of illegal aliens. Subsequent grants of amnesty is one of the ways which it seeks a permanent hold on power. The uh, Pew Research has reported Latino voters favored the Democrat Party by a significant margin. 
I almost laugh when people say, well, Trump made a lot of inroads with the with a Latino vote. He got like 40 percent. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, 40 percent to 60 percent. That's a slaughter. Jim Clifton, chairman and CEO of Gallup, asks, here are the questions every leader should be able to answer, regardless of their politics. How many more people are coming to the southern border? What's the plan? There are 33 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. Roughly 450 million adults live in the region. Gallup asked them if they would like to move to another country permanently if they could. A whopping 27% said yes. This means roughly 120 million people south of the border would like to migrate somewhere. Gallup then asked them where they would like to move. Of those who want to leave their country permanently, 35% of the 120 million or 42 million said they want to go to the United States. 42 million. Seekers of citizenship or asylum are watching to determine exactly when and how is the best time to make their move. In addition to finding, this is him writing, a solution for the thousands of migrants currently at the border, let's include the bigger, harder question. What about all those who would like to come? What is the message to them? What is the 10-year plan? 330 million U.S. citizens are wondering. So are 42 million Latin Americans. People want to know how to follow along. It's hilarious. It's American Marxism, page 129. And I point out the plan is linked to the critical theory Marxist ideology. That is, the more migrants, the better. Continue to overwhelm and collapse the system. Change the nation's politics, demographics, and citizenry. Ultimately transform the nature of the governing system. Now, the media hate it when I say this. But of course they would. The media are the mouthpiece for these various movements. And by no means support or accept assimilation, of course. After all, balkanization and tribalization are certain to destroy any country. That's what's going on on the southern border. That's what's going on on the southern border. So they don't give a damn if people coming into this country illegally have the virus or not. But the American citizen. They kick the American citizen around like a soccer ball. And in their name, and in the name of health, and the media there, even though the media know that so much of what has been said, thanks to them and regurgitated by our government, has been false. Even though a creep, a clown like Andrew Cuomo now, doing victory laps, because the United States Department of Justice is not going to do a civil rights investigation of all the people he killed. I'll be right back. I know you love freedom. Now, how do I know that? Because you listen to my show. And my show and everything I do is about preserving freedom and the form of government that secures it for us. It's the same with Hillsdale College, one of the very best truly liberal arts colleges in the nation. Hillsdale's committed to pursuing truth and defending liberty. Hillsdale teaches students to defend freedom no matter what they major in. Hillsdale teaches them how to defend liberty. And they do that for you, too, through their free monthly digest of constitutional thought called Imprimus. 5.7 million Americans receive Imprimus for free every month. And you can subscribe for free at levinforhillsdale.com. No strings attached. Generous donors who want to preserve freedom for future generations make it possible for Hillsdale to send in Primus to you free every month. Start receiving in Primus to learn how to defend the freedom you love. Visit levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. Mark Levin, the great one. The great one, Mark Levin. Dial in now, 877-381-3811. Governor Ron DeSantis will be on the program in the final hour of the program. So I'm getting inquiries again. So I will. T- I get press inquiries now. Not not from the uh, the you know the phony press, from real press from time to time. And um, they want to know our numbers for week two on the book. And I said I don't have the formal numbers. I have the best numbers that we can put together. Well, what are they? What are they? So I'm going to tell you first, and they can listen. It appears that in two weeks' time. I haven't even told Mr. Producer, Mr. Colescreen of this, I don't believe. In two weeks' time, it appears that 565,000 copies of this book have sold, Mr. Producer. And they're now putting over one million in print. 
Isn't that a lot? Now what that means is there's a movement afoot. You know, it's an amazing thing how these fools on TV who pretend to be journalists, these fools in our classrooms who pretend to be professors, and all the rest of them and their ilk, they look down at us while they're propping up the truly stupid in America. And it is you folks who read. And I don't mean comic books. I mean a real book. A serious book. Seven chapters. The first six chapters are scholarship. Explaining what we're up against and who they are and all the rest of it. The last chapter is about activism. So this is an extraordinarily unique book. It's not your typical book. It's a mixture of scholarship, explanation, and activism. And I think that's part of the big appeal. And you can go on Amazon.com and you can read almost 2,500, maybe it's close to 3,000 now comments. It's five stars. Just so you know, in the second week alone, this book has been bought by more of you than bought Liberty and Tyranny in the first week. You believe that, Mr. Bitters? Now, the key here is to read it, or to read good chunks of it. Because the purpose is for you to take the message in the book and become the Paul Revere's. To take the information in the book, the message in the book, you don't have to give it any attribution whatsoever. You're your own man, you're your own woman. Take the information in the book and use it. Use it. Spread the word. What these American Marxists do is they use liberty, as I've talked about, to destroy liberty. We need to use liberty to promote liberty. We still have the ability to communicate. I mean, at the very basic level, word of mouth. Word of mouth is huge. There's tens of millions of us. Word of mouth is huge. But you can still go on the Internet and communicate through emails. You can get on your iPhone or whatever you use and communicate through texts. If you insist on using Twitter and Facebook, you can still use those platforms to a point until they catch up with you. And Parler as well. But what we have going for us is what the original American revolutionaries had going for them. They were smart. They were literate. They read. It didn't matter if one was a farmer or an ironsmith or or owned a pub. None of it mattered. I'm not talking about education and degrees and so on. I'm talking about your smarts. What's between your ears? We have that going for us. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a proud American in the first place. When we talk about the Constitution and so forth, these are not the easiest subjects in the world. When we talk about market capitalism, you really have to think about stuff like that. When we talk about handouts and big government, you don't have to be smart to talk about any of that stuff. We are smarter than our opponents. We are smarter. The problem is they're fanatics. They're fanatics against liberty. They're fanatics against free market capitalism. They're fanatics against the country. And they have voices everywhere. You hear them. You see them. This is intended to overcome that. It's that simple. I am not Thomas Paine. This is not the American Crisis pamphlet. But I am Mark Levin, and this is American Marxism book. This isn't 1776, but this is 2021. What do you think the Founding Fathers would say today? What do you think Thomas Paine and Paul Revere would say today? What do you think the great men of American history would say today? They would say, spread the word. From town to town. From county to county, from city to city, spread the word. I've done many interviews 
with local hosts are absolutely wonderful. And sometimes they bring up issues that are very interesting to me. For instance, one host said, the media will never do X, Y, Z. I said, I know that. So why are we even thinking that they might? We need to get around the media and communicate with each other. We need to get around them. I don't expect the media to embrace me or to embrace the argument or to embrace my listeners, my audience. Of course not. They hate us. That's the whole point. Big tech. Until we have a majority in both houses and the presidency, we're not going to be able to change that rule 230. The Democrats now love big tech for obvious reasons. So we need to communicate with each other still. And in the last chapter, there's things I suggest about big tech. All kinds of stuff. We need to use liberty, as long as we have it, to promote liberty. Where possible, we need to become litigious, just like them. And there are many groups in this country who will assist you. There's so many things we can do and we must do. But the first thing we need to do is be open to it. The second thing we need to do is understand the enemy. They're the enemy. Enemy. The third thing we need to do is have strategies and tactics to address with it. I have a whole chapter on this, but that's not the end all and be all. I'm sure many of you have a lot of ideas. That's a good thing. But the fourth and most important thing we need to do is rally and galvanize and communicate with each other. If the reprobates can do it, surely the people who care about this country, their family, and the future can do it too. We don't have any political savior. The Republican Party has no idea what's taking place in this country. Honest to God, some Republicans do, but the party as a whole, they're stuck. In fact, they view many of us as the enemy. I remember the Tea Party movement and how they hated us. So we have to address this at various levels. That's the point. Let me tell you something. I think I've done so far, I mean, scores of interviews with so many wonderful people. Wonderful people on Fox, wonderful people in talk radio, wonderful people in various uh, websites, bloggers, news organizations. Just fantastic. And after a while, you get worn out. But then I think about you, I think about the future of the country, and I get my second win. This has been a long process. It took me 16 months to write it. We've been talking about it for three months. Now it's finally out. Now we need to galvanize, and now I believe we are. The only thing I would ask is those of you who are listening to me, because there are many millions of you listening to this show and listening to my podcast on so many different platforms and so forth, please join us. We need you. Please join us. All you have to do is read. All you have to do is reach out. All you have to do is a few steps, a few things here and there, whatever you're comfortable with. I believe what we are going to what we are going to create here is an army of activists and an army of leaders today and for tomorrow. I believe the consequences of you, this movement, will be felt in the 2022 election like people cannot imagine. Lindsey Graham's finally picked up on it. I think he heard me mention it on Fox. By the way, we should take a survey. Who's on TV more, Lindsey Graham or Anthony Fauci? And by the way, I'm not being negative towards Lindsey Graham. It's just a simple question, don't you think, Mr. Producer? I think it's fair. Now, Lindsey Graham's a politician. You expect him to be on TV, right? Anthony Fauci, what's his excuse? I'm conferring uh, all my expertise over 50 years. Mask, no mask. Vaccine, no mask. Anyway. 
But I, I, I want to thank those who've jumped in. I want to encourage others to jump in. If you have kids in school, I mean, you've got to really be up on this stuff. If you're sick and tired of what these corporations are doing, there are ways to address this. It's pushback time. It's pushback time. If you go into a retail store and they don't have it, that's BS. Don't go there anymore. You can get it on Amazon.com. They'll deliver it the next day. But if you go into a retail store and they do have it, that's great. And most of these retail stores have done a hell of a job. All right, we'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I know you love freedom. Now, how do I know that? Because you listen to my show. And my show and everything I do is about preserving freedom and the form of government that secures it for us. It's the same with Hillsdale College. One of the very best truly liberal arts colleges in the nation. Hillsdale's committed to pursuing truth and defending liberty. Hillsdale teaches students to defend freedom no matter what they major in. Hillsdale teaches them how to defend liberty. And they do that for you too through their free monthly digest of constitutional thought called Imprimus. 5.7 million Americans receive Imprimus for free every month. And you can subscribe for free at levinforhillsdale.com. No strings attached. Generous donors who want to preserve freedom for future generations make it possible for Hillsdale to send in Primus to you free every month. Start receiving in Primus to learn how to defend the freedom you love. Visit levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. This is from the Federalist, Jordan Davidson. Thierry, Capitol Police Officer, who testified about January 6, previously defended violent George Floyd riots in Kenosha. Now, of course, Adam Kingsinger was busy crying, so he couldn't figure this out. And, of course, Liz Cheney's on a hate, so she couldn't either. Harry Dunn, the teary-eyed U.S. Capitol Police Officer, who testified... And Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's politicized January 6th committee, and by the way, I haven't even seen this on TV, previously defended the violent riots that shook the nation last summer and caused billions of dollars in damage. In a tweet directed at Fox News' Tucker Carlson last August, Dunn asked, quote, Why is murder an appropriate response to property damage, but property damage isn't an appropriate response to murder? This is a Capitol Hill police officer. In addition to cheering on the destructive behavior of rioters last summer that were linked to more than 30 deaths, while hypocritically condemning those of the Capitol rioters, Dunn repeatedly and publicly berated former President Donald Trump for being, quote, racist in chief. No wonder they invited him to testify. This is why they didn't want Banks or Jordan on this committee. Going on. Dunn also criticized members of Trump's administration for covering for the president and regularly hassled Fox News' Laura Ingram and Carlson. I'm embarrassed to have once looked up to you, Secretary Carson, excuse me, Laura Ingram and, uh, yeah, I'm embarrassed to have once looked up to you, Secretary Carson. You've sold out and are acting as a narcissistic and egotistic as your boss. Dunn tweeted as former U.S. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Ben Carson. I hate at Tucker Carlson. Oh, shoot. Lost it. Hold on a second, folks. I'm trying to find it. I'm reading with one eye, so uh, I'll have to find it later, I guess. Now, here it is. I hate at Tucker Carlson. What an out-of-touch a-hole, except he spells it out that has no clue about anything that doesn't look like him or agree with him, he tweeted in 2019. This is the police officer. No wonder he was there. None of this was presented at the hearing. None of it. Just a couple of weeks before he gave his testimony, Dunn also cheered on known Russia hoaxer Democrat Representative Eric Swalwell. Isn't he the one with Fang Fang, Mr. Producer? Doing the no-no with Fang Fang? For telling the truth about the Capitol right and condemn Fox News for not having him on as a guest. Clips of Dunn crying during Tuesday's hearing buzzed around the Internet on Tuesday, 
often paired with corporate media headlines lamenting the officer's reported experience with the quote-unquote insurrectionists. Dunn is an open Biden voter, claimed in his testimony rioters called him racial slurs during the January 6th riot. According to Dunn, it was the first time he'd ever been verbally assaulted for his skin color while wearing his police uniform. Others on the Capitol Police Force, he, he recounted, reported similar experiences. And Jordan Davidson's a staff writer at The Federalist. Well, if there's witnesses to that, I hope they come forward. I'm sure there were a lot of iPhones and other technical devices that could have recorded that. I remember when John Lewis said that he was spat upon and called the N-word at a Tea Party rally. Remember that, Mr. Producer? They couldn't find a single piece of video, audio, or anything. A single witness to support that, t- that comment. Nothing. How is this man still a police officer? Not because he testified today, but I'm just saying. I thought police officers aren't supposed to be this political. Foul mouth as well. But he's down for the revolution. There's no question about that. He's just down for a different revolution. And uh, I want to thank the people who exposed this officer. Because certainly nobody on the committee did. This is a diversion. It's a diversion, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's a fact. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. The Republicans did hold a uh, press conference, and they, they raised some questions that they think should be asked and answered by this committee, but sh- of course they won't be. Here's Kevin McCarthy today. Cut 21. Go. Speaker Pelosi will only pick on people onto the committee that will ask the questions she wants asked. That becomes a failed committee and a failed report, a sham that no one can believe. If you want the true answers, do not be afraid of the questions that will get asked. And drive the evidence to wherever it comes forward. We owe it to the officers, we owe it to the nation, to have an open and fair debate with all questions being asked. Again, the Republicans want to participate with the Republicans that are able to be on the committee, that have jurisdiction, have the knowledge, and the ability to ask the tough questions that can get the right answers. It's unfortunate we start with a committee chair who will tell you everything's on the table except the Speaker's office. How can you ever get to the bottom of the questions? How can you ever get to the solutions to make sure the Capitol is never put in this position again? From December 14th, they knew. The last time there was a break in the line was during the Kavanaugh hearings. Why weren't changes made then? Why weren't action taken after the IG report? There's a lot of questions that could get asked today to make sure these officers will never be put in this position. January 6th should have never happened. We should have prepared and be prepared for the officers. Make sure they have the training and the equipment that they needed. Steve Scalise, cut 22. Go. What we're here to talk about today is Speaker Pelosi's constant attempt to cover up facts that she doesn't want out there. You know, for weeks now, Jim Jordan and Jim Banks have been raising some very tough questions, questions that need to be answered about why Speaker Pelosi didn't make sure that Capitol Police had all the tools they needed to be prepared for that day. Now, maybe because they were raising those questions, they got canceled by this new cancel culture that we see moving throughout the country, led by Speaker Pelosi and a lot of our socialist allies here in Congress, where they want to shut out voices that raise tough questions that they don't want to be asked or answered. 
And yet they were starting to raise those questions about why the Capitol Police didn't have the tools they need needed. What kind of intelligence did Speaker Pelosi get early off, weeks in advance, as Leader McCarthy talked about, that gave telltale signals uh, that could have prevented what happened on January 6th? But Speaker Pelosi said that she doesn't want those questions asked, so she kicked them off the committee. She took an unprecedented step uh, of refusing to allow members to be appointed by the minority leader to a select committee. Had never before happened in the history of Congress. Representative Jim Banks. Go. It's clear at this point that Nancy Pelosi has cherry-picked the members to serve on this committee. She's pre-written a narrative. Only members who will stick to her talking points are allowed to serve on this committee. If this is truly a fact-finding mission to make sure that January 6th never happens again, this isn't, this isn't what that looks like. Uh, today, I want to repeat a call that I made last week to the chairman of this committee to bring before this committee today on this panel the head of the Capitol Police Union, who told many of us last week and has said publicly and privately that on January 6th, the rank-and-file members of the Capitol Police Department the heroes that make up the men and women, the heroes that make up the Capitol Police Department. They were not prepared for what happened on January 6th in spite of intelligence reports that date back three weeks before that day. They weren't equipped on January 6th with the proper equipment that they needed to handle what happened that day. And they weren't trained for what was going to happen that day. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Representative Jim Jordan, cut 24, go. Why don't the Democrats want to get to the truth? Why don't they want to answer the fundamental question, which is why wasn't there a better security posture on that day? Let me just read from a news account from February of this year. Pelosi's office had previously impressed upon the sergeant of arms, Paul Irving, that the National Guard was to remain off Capitol grounds. Irving told House administration the discussion centered around the, quote, optics. Why were the Democrats so concerned about the optics? Why were they so concerned about how it would look? Because what happened last summer? It's all driven by what happened last summer, where Democrats normalized anarchy, normalized political violence, raised bail money for the very rioters and looters who destroyed small businesses, attacked innocent civilians, and maybe most importantly, attacked police officers. When you spend a year talking about defunding the police and actually defund the police, it's kind of hard to have more police here on January 6th like they should have done. That's the fundamental question. All right. Now you know why Banks and Jordan were not allowed on this committee, because they're not Cheney and Kingsinger. And, of course, the corrupt media in America will continue to push this narrative. All right, moving on. Politico of all places. There's a story in Politico by Maggie Severance, if that is her name. People are scared. Democrats lose ground on school equity plans. Oh, that got my attention. An immigrant who came to the United States from the Soviet Union, she's a registered Democrat from San Mateo County, California, and she's alarmed over her state's new model ethnic studies curriculum, which cites critical race theory as a key theoretical framework in pedagogy. I want to remind you it's critical race theory. Remember that word theory. This isn't fact. It's not history. It's not substance. It's racism dressed up as scholarship. It is Louis Farrakhanism. That's what it is. With that end game of Marxism. I firmly believe that if the vast majority of Californians and Americans knew about this and about the content of this type of curriculum, this would not be happening. We would not be having this conversation, Kaplan said. A registered Democrat who voted for Biden. Kaplan, who has launched an email list, set up meetings with state legislators and recruited people to meet with their school boards to discuss ethnic studies. Uh, Let's see here. They're up in arms over their school system's new equity initiatives, which they argue are costly and divisive, encouraging students to group themselves by race and take proactivist stances. Proponents of the initiative say they are long overdue uh, uh, toward getting rid of systemic racism in the school system. 
On the national level, Democrats have insisted that the brush fires over critical race theory are largely the work of right-wing activists who willfully misrepresent what it means, and they blame Fox News for fanning parents' anger. Uh, Folks, these people are all liars, or they have no idea what they're talking about. And those of you who have American Marxism, you know exactly what is meant by critical race theory. The book is basically a seminar, that little section of it, on that issue. That's another right-wing conspiracy. This is totally made up by Donald Trump and, and Glenn Youngkin, the gubernatorial candidate, Virginia gubernatorial candidate Terry McAuliffe said in June, I don't think we would think that educating the youth and the next future leaders of the country on systemic racism is indoctrination. And the only black governor Virginia has had has denounced McAuliffe because he defeated two out of three primary candidates in the Democrat Party who were black women. And he points this out. He says, this guy's a hypocrite. It's a joke. But those Democrats appear to be underestimating parents' anger in places where critical race theory is top of mind. Objections to new equity plans are not the sole province of conservatives, but extend to many moderate and independent voters. They're not equity plans. It is racism. So political interviewed a number of school board members, political operatives, and activists in Democrat and left-leaning communities, including the northern Virginia suburbs of Washington, Palm Beach County, Florida, New York's Westchester County, Maricopa County covering Phoenix, Arizona, and suburban Detroit. Parents who are showing up to school board meetings and have helped launch a spat of uh, recall elections say they are angry about a host of issues, including what they see as a myopic focus on diversity at school boards, ongoing frustration over a year of closed schools, and school lesson plans they say are becoming too progressive, too fast, a.k.a. Marxist. Nothing about this is progressive, Marxist. Now, while those media... Excuse me, while those complaints have often been branded in the media as anti-critical race theory, the causes of the anger are varied and are being ignored, parents say. The stakes aren't lost on Amanda Lippman, founder of the Democratic organization Run for Something, which works to elect school board members and other local officials. She said, this is a perfect storm of something that can appeal to or draw back in some of the suburban parents that might have voted Republican in 2016, Democrat in 2018 and 2020, but they can draw them back to the Republican Party in 2022. You know, people say, I don't do I told you so's. I do I told you so's. And I told suburban mothers in particular, white suburban mothers in particular, who didn't like Donald Trump's tweeting. You're going to vote for Joe Biden? Look at the consequences. Now, you're all white supremacists. Your children are children of white supremacists. This Marxist ideology is being imposed on your children in the public school system. And you, in part, are responsible for it because you voted this way. And there's a war on the suburbs that's about to take place. Donald Trump talked about it. We've talked about it many times with Stanley Kaplan on this program over the course of several years since the Obama administration. There's also a war on the inner cities taking place with lawlessness, the war on the cops. The Democrats are at war with the inner cities. They're at war with the suburbs. They're at war with women, white, black, and in between. And people need to start paying attention. Now, critical race theory, they write, is an academic discipline that evolved at law schools and universities in the 80s to examine institutional racism and challenge existing approaches to racial justice. No, that's not what it is. But you get that from Wikipedia? From that corrupt operation? Now, I'm not going to read this whole article to you. It's quite long. I printed it out. It's uh, it's about six pages long, single-spaced. The word Marxism never shows up. Not once. And yet this entire ideology is founded in Marxism. The word Marxism doesn't even exist in this, in this story. For a reason. Because the media will only go so far. Remember, they're the Praetorian Guard media. The media will only go so far. 
in criticizing this ideology or any ideology. But nowhere is the word Marxism in this story, and nowhere is it explained where critical race theory was given birth. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Over 2,000 of you, my listeners, made the switch from overpriced wireless carriers to Pure Talk over the past few months. We want the rest of you to join us and to see what we're talking about. If you're with AT&T and Verizon or T-Mobile, your family could save over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk. You get great coverage, you can keep your phone and your number, and you'll save a fortune. Pure Talk is the top-rated wireless company by Consumer Affairs with the absolute best consumer service team based right here in America. Does that sound good? Well, it gets better. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data, just $30 a month. And if you go over on data, they don't charge you for it. They don't care. Go to puretalkusa.com. And enter promo code Levin Podcast. Again, puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin, L E V I N Podcast. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. That's puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. I, I don't think Anthony Fauci is qualified, competent be running this infectious disease operation any longer. I really don't. The idea that he's run it for almost 40 years is just incredible to me. But here he is, hat tip, Twitter, cut 14, go. People should not be walking around with masks. Let me just state for the record that masks are not theater. Wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better. Masks are protective. And we, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. Mark, there has n- not been any indication that putting a mask on and wearing a mask for a considerable period of time has any deleterious effects. There are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of staying uh, uh, inside uh, uh, there? Of course. And, uh, you do not need to wear a mask indoors if, in fact, you've been vaccinated. But good that you're vaccinated. But in a situation where you have people indoors, particularly crowded, you should wear a mask. So even if you are vaccinated, you should wear a mask. If, in fact, you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you are protected, and you do not need to wear a mask outdoors or indoors. When the children go out into the community, you want them to continue to wear masks. You know, if you look at at, at children outside, particularly when they're with the family, uh, walking down the street, playing a game or what have you, don't have to wear a mask. The, 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 The pediatric, the Academy of Pediatric, actually makes that recommendation that children should be wearing masks. Uh, from two years old onward. And you're asking now, if your child is a member of your household, can you walk outdoors with your child without a mask? According to that chart, the answer is yes. But the child can't, not to beat it, yeah. beat it to death. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Because now okay. the CDC says, I mean, I think I've got this right. One mask is better than zero masks. Two masks is better than one mask. But you don't have to have double masks. Is, is I, that right? I, I mean, <laughs> you know, it became clear that cloth coverings that you didn't have to buy in a store that you could make yourself were adequate. And then you wanted to fit better. So one of the ways you could do it, if you would like to, is put a cloth mask over, which actually here... And here and here, where you could get leakage in, is much better contained. Quack, quack. How ridiculous is this? Nobody has faith in this guy anymore except the American media and the Democrat Party. Great, let him be their doctor. Let him be their doctor. The idea that this guy is some kind of an expert, he's not an expert. He's flailing around. And if you don't genuflect every time he says, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, two wear masks, inside, outside, outside, inside, three people or more, six feet apart, 12 inches apart. This guy has done tremendous damage to this country, in my humble opinion. I don't even think he means to do it. He just is. And beyond that, his agency helped fund that Wuhan lab. 
And I'm glad other people are finally talking about this. And I'm glad that we were able to break this wide open on life, liberty, and Levin, just the way we were able to break wide open in March 2017 that there had been spying on Trump. But this guy, he should be yanked. But he won't be yanked, because the guy who should yank him, Biden, he should be yanked too. If he's yanked, the vice president should be yanked. They should all be yanked, but they're not going to be yanked. So here we are. I'll be right back. On the straight and narrow path, you have a guide. Mark Levin. Call him now at 877-381-3811. Okay, I warned you. Those of you who want signed editions of American Marxism, I'm warning you that if this is something you want for the holidays or a birthday or just something to have, these are first edition copies. There's now over a million copies, and they're not all first edition. If you want a signed copy, you need to act now, because I can tell you that they only have about 15% left. And the closer we get to these holidays and so on, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone, I suspect, in the next week or so, maybe even the next day or so. I don't know. But all of a sudden, there's a rush on them. So I want you to be aware of this. You can go to premiercollectibles.com slash Marxism. premiercollectibles.com slash Marxism. I pre-sign these copies. I know they're first edition copies. That is, I sign the book plates. I know they're being put in first edition copies. That was the deal. So you want to get your copies now while they last. You can get as many as you want, but when they run out, you can't get any. It happens every two years. That's premiercollectibles.com slash Marxism. Premiercollectibles.com slash Marxism. Okay, I said it. And I hope I put it in proper perspective. Now, in addition, wait a minute, where was I? To this montage of the masks by Fauci. We have Joe Biden. Joe Biden, as I often said, was the dumbest man in the Senate, the dumbest vice president, and hence he's now the dumbest president we've ever had. And uh, he was visiting the director of national intelligence in McLean, Virginia, I know where this is. I take it it's the CIA building. And uh, he had a question and an answer. Cut, 15, go. Will you require all federal employees to get vaccinated? That's under consideration right now, but if you're not vaccinated, you're not nearly as smart as I thought you were. Are you concerned that this uh, wait, 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 what, what does that mean? If you are not vaccinated, you're not as smart. Oh, well, then I'm going to go get vaccinated. See, what this clown is not is a leader. If you want to encourage people to get vaccinated who aren't vaccinated, you don't call them dumb. You don't call them down. You don't ridicule them. But that's all this clown knows. He's a street hack politician. That's all he ever was. And now he's in the Oval Office. He would say anything, do anything to become an elected official. He's a dumb, dumb guy. It's what he is. He went to a stupid law school and graduated near the bottom of his class. No offense. No offense. It is what it is. I'm just telling you the truth. Then he has to lie about his, uh, about his background. He got all these scholarships. He never got a scholarship. He graduated in the top whatever of his class. Top whatever. He was in the bottom whatever. He was dumb even when he had his wits. He was dumb. Well, that's interesting, Mr. Producer. Not to offend, not to concern, but... As I speak, there is a big brown spider on the rug here. Do you have those in uh, where you live, Mr. Producer? So we happen to live near the woods here. And uh, my belief in nature is nature should stay where it belongs. Mark, you're the interloper. Excuse me. I conquered this, this area. This is my home. They have no respect for private property right. Now these big damn brown spiders... They can really hurt you. They're almost like little rodents. They will, and they are fast. Yeah, they will jump. And so what I need to do when I finally get to the break in six minutes from now, I've got to keep an eye on this damn thing. 
is to, uh, well, is to address it. May I say it that way? Assuming the little bastard doesn't go under some furniture or go into the closet or something. I, I, this is a real time right here. I'm just being honest with you. Now, more on the border, ladies and gentlemen, if I may. Um, this is from Right Scoop. It's breaking right now. Our friends at Right Scoop. Texas police say Biden administration releasing illegals with COVID into the Rio Grande Valley. Now, this is the Rio Grande Valley where we have a 900% increase in COVID, which is being flooded with more illegal aliens than any other part of the border. The border is very much a super spreader event, as we've suspected. Police in La Jolla, Texas, are now asking the public to take stronger measures to protect themselves because Biden is releasing illegal aliens with COVID into the area. This is being reported by Bill Fox, L.A. After an incident at a Whataburger, police in La Jolla, Texas, say they've learned illegal immigrants who test positive for COVID are being released from federal custody at a local Catholic charity in the RGV, uh, which then places them in local hotels without notice. And what is it? What kind of country is this where the federal bureaucrats are releasing illegal aliens into communities without notice? You know, this has to happen in dark blue Democrat areas. Then, then maybe we'll get the attention. Wherever Adam Schiff lives, this needs to go on. Wherever this clown, uh, I can't remember all their names. Wherever, wherever these guys are, this is where the illegal immigrate. They, if, if it were me and you're busing people to a place, first of all, they wouldn't be here. But if you're busing, bust them there. Adam Schiff, okay. Gerald Nadler, oh, okay. Who's next? Is idiot Raskin from Maryland? Okay. Okay, everybody, raise your hands. Where, where else? Wherever, uh, wherever Joe Biden's multi-million dollar mansion is, right there. Wherever Patrice, what's her name, of Black Lives Matter, right there, everywhere. Where's LeBron? Right there. Where's that idiot coach of San Antonio? Pavlich or whatever his name. Boy, does he suck. I don't watch the Olympics. I used to. Religious, not anymore. Not anymore. I don't care. I feel bad for the Patriots in the Olympics. But the other loser, it just turns me off. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. So anyway, wherever these uh, soccer players are kneeling, the women, you know, the losers, right there. We, we ought to, if, if this is what people want, then the people who want this ought to, ought to benefit from it. That's sort of my attitude. But we're going to get lectures about masks now. While the same people don't give a damn about what's going on on the border, actually celebrate it. We're going to get, we're going to get this now. So we're going to get this from Rochelle Walensky. Who is Rochelle Walensky? She's the CDC director. Now, this is amazing to me. We don't even know who the hell these people are. They walk in. Maybe she was a proctologist or a, I don't know. There she is. She's the CDC director. Or like the uh, Surgeon General. Surgeon General, I don't know. Who knows the Surgeon General? Maybe he was a podiatrist. Now he's the Surgeon General. Walking around with his general uniform and his hat. So weird. Here's Rochelle Walensky, CDC Director. Cut 16, go. In areas with substantial and high transmission, CDC recommends fully vaccinated people wear masks in public, indoor settings to help prevent the spread of the Delta variant and protect others. Okay, now we know one of those areas is the, is the RGV, Rio Grande Valley, which has the heaviest crossing of illegal aliens. So if you're vaccinated there, you need to wear a mask at all times. You have to wear a mask at all times because of the Delta variant. Why don't we secure the borders? No, 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 no. Just wear a mask. Wait a minute, that'll fix it. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Over 2,000 of you, my listeners, made the switch from overpriced wireless carriers to Pure Talk over the past few months. We want the rest of you to join us and to see what we're talking about. If you're with AT&T and Verizon or T-Mobile, your family could save over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk. You get great coverage, you can keep your phone and your number, and you'll save a fortune. 
Pure Talk is the top-rated wireless company by Consumer Affairs with the absolute best consumer service team based right here in America. Does that sound good? Well, it gets better. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data, just $30 a month. And if you go over on data, they don't charge you for it. They don't care. Go to puretalkusa.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast. Again, puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin, L E V I N Podcast. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. That's puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. Man, oh man, people interested in this. The matter's been resolved. I'm not going to go into explicit detail, Mr. Producer. The huge brown spider that looks like some kind of a rodent, uh, the matter's been resolved. It's been resolved. And no, I didn't let it loose, some idiot. No, I didn't let it loose. It's resolved. It's over. And by the way, when you're staring down these things, it is spooky. Now, I honestly, I don't like killing anything. I really don't. I really don't. Except snakes. No, but I really don't. Should I continue with this, Mr. Producer? I, I saw a, I thought it was a copperhead once in the street, because, you know, I live near the river here. And I'm in my car. Have I ever told this story? Am I going to freak everybody out? It was a copperhead. And I was in my car. And I resolved that one too, Mr. Producer. You get my drift? We got a lot of little kids running around here. And dogs and cats and everything else. I will be on Hannity on Fox at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 9.30 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. Well, this hour is almost over. All right, here we go. Senate defense budget. Their bill would require women to register for the draft. Have you heard this one, Mr. Producer? My Catholic Italian Mr. Producer says, Oi, I don't blame him. Oi is right. This is from... Uh, New York Post, a Senate panel's newly approved defense budget includes a provision requiring women to register for the draft. There were a number of Republican senators on this committee who either did not vote, they weren't present, or voted for this. And we're trying to figure out which ones. Now those of you, forget about PC and all the rest of the crap, those of you with a daughter, those of you with a little girl, do you want that little girl to register for the draft? Of course you don't. Changes to the draft, officially known as the Selective Service System, were made official in the National Defense Authorization Act, the annual military budget bill, which the Senate Armed Services Committee announced it had approved on Thursday. The NDAA amends the Military Select Service Act to require the registration of women for selective service. Now, the U.S. military has not instituted a draft since the Vietnam War, and Pentagon officials have repeatedly said they intend to keep U.S. armed forces all voluntary. Still, men between the ages of 18 and 25 are legally required to be registered with a selective service system. Penalties for not doing so include losing access to federal financial programs for higher education. Actually, that would be a good thing, I think. But the language strikes explicit references to men, changing the requirement to all Americans. The change was originally proposed by Senate Armed Services Committee Chairman Jack Reed of Rhode Island, reprobate, but Congress has been debating the issue since 2016. You know, as Rome burns, ladies and gentlemen, as Rome burns, it's unbelievable. At the time, the Armed Services Committees in both the House and Senate included language in their defense budgets, though it ended up not making the final bill text after the House dropped the language. Just, it just never stops. 
Congress has passed the NDAA annually for the last 60 years. The Senate Armed Services Panel approved a 778 budget, blah, 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 and blah, blah. Okay, great. And by the way, we have an all-volunteer military, as they point out, we have for almost half a century. And so these young men and women, they sign up voluntarily to serve in the United States military, and under the Biden military, they're abused. Many of them are said to be white supremacists, even if they're not white or supremacists. They need to be taught critical race theory like all the other people in the country. They need to have their social media checked. They need to this. They need to that. These are volunteers. These are volunteers. But it doesn't matter, does it? And so that's slipped into this spending bill. Slipped into this spending bill. There's no national debate. You're not able to contact your senators about it. Because they don't believe in representative government. They believe they should have power and they should be able to exercise it without oversight. There's almost no media outlet that's reported on this. Except, who was this? The New York Post. New York Slimes, Washington Compost, maybe they mentioned it in passing, that's about it. But shouldn't there be a national debate on this? I mean, when this came up years and years ago under the ER and and so forth, the American people didn't want it. They objected to it. You're not even consulted about anything anymore. They don't even take the time. They slip it into these bills. Oh, oh, we got to fund the military. Here, slip that one in. And they do that with this uh, infrastructure. Now, infrastructure, human infrastructure... Unbelievable. I will say this. What Lyndon Johnson once sent to a member of the Senate who didn't vote for his budget bill. said, you know that bridge that you wanted? Yeah. Well, you can shove that you know where. I say that to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, this final hour of the podcast is sponsored exclusively by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we care about, faith, family, and freedom. Thank you for listening, and please support AMAC. And you can become a member at amac.us slash join. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post... Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. One of the great websites out there, there's several, but one of them is Just the News. It is a fantastic actual news site. And I have a story. Big Labor spent $1.8 billion during the 2020 election cycle. billion. Now you know why your schools are unionized and so much else is unionized because the Democrat Party owes these entities a ton. Large unions must file reports with the Labor Department disclosing political activities and lobbying, but many expenses are misclassified. Organized labor spent more than $1.8 billion on political activity and lobbying in the U.S. during the 2020 election cycle, according to a new study published by the National Institute for Labor Relations Research. The majority of the money spent by labor, $1.4 billion, came straight from union dues taken from workers who can legally be fired if they refuse to fund union activities, the Institute reports. Of the total amount analyzed, more than $1.4 billion went to union general treasuries. More than $287 million was spent on government unions, state and local PACs and lobbying. And $57 million was spent on 2020 federal PACs and committees. I thought these... Well, let's go on. The findings were published after the U.S. Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee held a hearing on the PRO Act, which would expand union power nationwide 
eliminate right-to-work laws in 27 states. In other words, again, the Democrat Party nationalizing their politics, nationalizing their policies, and blowing red states out of the water. Whether it's their voting systems or labor policy, whatever it is. They want to make sure that Democrats win in red states and red states aren't red any longer. That's all. It's that simple. That's it. Now, right-to-work protections ensure that workers cannot be forced to pay dues to a union as a condition of employment. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, only 6.7% of private sector workers are union members. And recent polls have found more than 7 in 10 Americans support right-to-work protections. Union bosses flood the American political system with money from their forced dues, stocked treasuries every election cycle, Pursuing an agenda of even more coercive power over workers. This is my ex-chair. I'm working on the arm. There it is. Even as the rank and file associate with them in near record low numbers. Unbelievable. These are not bottom-up movements. They're all top-down movements. Now, the report is based on public disclosure documents filed by union officials with the U.S. Department of Labor. It identifies hundreds of disbursements made by union officials to political entities that were classified as non-political expenditures on DOL disclosure forms, which indicate that many more similar expenditures exist. And they do. And one of the worst of the worst is the National Education Association, just so you know. Now, you should be able to get their latest tax returns by going on their website. They're supposed to post them. This is one of the things of the many things I talk about in American Marxism. You should be able to go into their website and get their tax returns. If it's not there, they're violating the Internal Revenue Code. But you can also request a copy of their tax returns, their latest, from the Internal Revenue Service directly. And I have links to different ways for you to do such things. So um, if they're using PAC money for union organizing or if they're using union money for PACs and so forth, you want to keep an eye on these things. You want to read your local papers. You want to raise questions at your board meetings. You want to raise questions with the Internal Revenue Service directly. And uh, imagine if hundreds of you in a particular county or school district do that. Just hundreds of you. That's significant. That's a big deal. So I wanted to point that out. $1.8 billion? Now, they're getting something for $1.8 billion, 6.7% in the private sector, so we're not really talking about that so much. And I want the cops and firefighters and so forth, I want them to be able to protect themselves because there are nasty people trying to destroy them. But there's no reason why the National Education Association should be the National Education Union I know, I take off a lot of people when I say stuff like this. I don't much control. I don't care. I don't much care. This is, this is the way it is. This is where we are. All right, before we have Governor DeSantis on the program, I would like to go to our calls, Mr. Producer, and I do not have that up right now. So who do you recommend I speak to? Any, any irregular Americans? All normal? Okay, let's pick one. Oglesby, Illinois, Allen on XM Radio. How are you, sir? Oh, Mr. Levin, uh, I, I'm having the best day ever, except for when I listen to all the fake news and everything. But it's, not only is it a pleasure, but it's a great honor to speak with you. Thank you, Allen. You know, and if I talk too fast or I get too excited or I get too loud, just say, calm down, Allen. No, then fine. you'll sound like kill me, but no. that's okay. He does very well. Go right ahead, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, compliments to the call screener or whoever does your uh, waiting music. Uh, you play some good jams. All right. Play some really good music. Go for uh, it, baby, before we run news. out of time. I have a signed copy. I have a signed copy of your new book from my great buddy, Curtis Sievers, who's a fellow co-worker. We're both over-the-road truck drivers. I'm from Illinois. He's from Texas. And I'm thinking about moving to Texas, sir. Well, I would. Uh, think about that, too. I want to thank you and your buddy. How did you get the signed copies? Where did you get them from? I got them from my buddy, Curtis. He uh, ordered oh. them. How did you order them, Curtis? 
He pre-ordered them. He pre-ordered them. He At Premier. Seven, he bought. Yes, yes. Well, listen. I want to thank you guys, and Curtis in the background, thank you too, and all the truckers out there. God bless all of you. This country couldn't function without you. That's a fact. And, of course, you're under attack endlessly. You know, it amazes me when I see these 18-wheelers go by, Alan, and there's like 412 numbers on them. So what, what is it? License for this, certified this, weighing on this. It's a truck. They're moving it from A to B. Why are you harassing these people? Well, well Unbelievable. I'm hauling uh, the essentials. Our toilet paper and all that. I'm not hauling illegal aliens from the right. border, but that's another story, and that's another day. <laughs> all right, Alan. Thank you. And don't hang up. I'm going to send you another signed copy so you can give one to somebody else. Don't hang up. Thank you very much. Let us go to, uh, let's see, Eldon, Petersburg, Texas, the great WBAP. How are you? Just fine, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, uh, I live every day to listen to you when you come on. Thank you. And I wanted to also say, you said yesterday, and I wanted to mention it, uh, homage to Jer- uh, Jackie Mason. Yes, sir. I want to kind of age myself here. I can remember sitting in front of the black and white and watching him on the Ed Sullivan show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that shows you how old I am. He was but unbelievable. I just wanted to say, and I hope I can hold this together, Mark. Yeah, yeah. My son and I were, January 6th, we're in D.C., Mm-hmm. When all that broke loose, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you what Pelosi is pushing this, is because it didn't go really the way they wanted. They wanted all the slimy Walmart shoppers and such to just go bananas and start really hurting people and pull out the weapons, which there were none. It didn't go to plan the way they wanted it planned. The type of people that were there, Mark, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't walk the whole way from Union Station to where Trump was speaking. So they had rented me a little scooter, electric scooter. And I was going down the deal. I don't know, the plaza or whatever. Anyway, there were some steps I couldn't negotiate. There was a group of black men there in T-shirts that said, Black Men for Trump. They they picked me up. Mm. I'm sorry. They picked me up and set me up on the steps. They were people with banners with LBGT for Trump. That was the kind of people, people with their children, their babies, dogs, everything were there that day. That's what it was like, and that's who was there. Mm-hmm. And every time I hear this garbage on the, tea, on the radio, when I listen, because I won't watch the, the mainstream media anymore, but when I listen to these little clips of what they're saying there in D.C. and everything, and, and, and not even mentioning Ashley Babbitt, they, I mean, it just, you know, we're going to get this back. I, I, I agree with you. And, Eldon, don't hang up. I want to send you a signed copy of American Marxism. And we'll be right back. Mark Lovin. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest-growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead, A-M-A-C dot U-S. Well, it's always a pleasure to have Florida Governor Ron DeSantis with us. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Mark. How are you doing? Doing very, very well. Now, Governor, a couple of things I want to cover with you. The border. I read here we have a 900% increase in COVID uh, cases on the border, particularly the uh, Rio Grande Valley area, which is the heavy concentration. We have 40 Border Patrol agents who've gotten this virus. Um, 
And the CDC is issuing orders about masks. The CDC issued an order about landlords that they couldn't expel or remove tenants who couldn't pay because of the pandemic over the last year. Federal court said, you don't have that authority. How come the CDC isn't issuing a rule telling this administration to secure the border because people are coming across the border who obviously have this virus. They're coming out of poor countries. They don't have the money to get a, a, a vaccine. You got to believe most of them haven't been vaccinated. How come everything is wear masks, you know, wear, wear, wear this, do that, do that, and so forth? Okay. But when it comes to the border, it's no holds barred. Well, you're exactly right. I mean, if uh, you got a kid in kindergarten, they just said today they want the kid muzzled with a mask, uh, even though the COVID's not any risk to the kid. If you have a loved one overseas, they may not let them come and fly, um, just normal uh, travel because of COVID, they'll claim. But yet, if you want to just come straight across that border and have thousands of people pouring in, uh, they don't give a damn about COVID at that point. Mm -hmm. They're letting them right in. And I can tell you, uh, I've sent people there to help Governor Abbott because the federal government has dropped the ball. So we have Florida and other states stepping up to help Texas. I actually took a trip out there uh, about two weeks ago. And uh, it is unbelievable what's going on out there. And it's, you know, you have the drugs, which is important, the criminal aliens, which are going to cause huge problems throughout our country. But the sheer number of people coming through there, and all they do is they just give them a citation. They say, hey, call this number and set up a date for your own deportation hearing. Well, no one's coming for that. These guys are gone. They're going, and they're out into our country. And so if this goes on for the next three, three and a half years, you're going to have millions and millions of people and it's not people just from Mexico or even primarily. It's from over 100 different countries. Yeah, I, when I was there, we saw people from the Middle East. You saw Asians. You saw Haitians. Really, from anywhere, people know if you just get to that southern border, that's your ticket into the United States illegally, and the Biden administration is just going to let you right in. So how could you possibly have restrictions on U.S. citizens because of covid but yet have people pouring across, and not just people pouring across. They're coming from every part of the globe coming across. So who knows what the hell kind of uh, pathogens they're bringing in, in addition to COVID. And yet the CDC does not care at all about that. And I think the reason is ideology. Now you're quite right, and neither do the media. I mean, how many shows have uh, Fauci been on? I mean, you know, he's on endlessly. And I have a little joke. You don't need to respond. He's on TV more than Lindsey Graham. And I'm saying, Fa and Lindsey Graham's a politician. Fauci's supposed to be a scientist, right? He's supposed to be studying every night the data. Not one reporter has said to Fauci, wait a minute. You're talking about people need to wear masks. You're in on these meetings and so forth. You say nothing at all about the border. Not a word about people coming across, many of whom are here illegally, so they're not being tested. We don't know if they have what they have. And they're... Then we have people being released in the community. We have a judge. We have a state judge in one of these towns in Texas that's calling on the federal government and telling them, stop releasing people into these communities that have COVID-19. In other words, in some cases, Governor, they know they have the virus and they're still releasing them. Oh, yeah, no, I think without question, um, and I think that that's, uh, that's a deliberate choice for sure. You know, it's interesting, Fauci also uh, didn't have really much to say about the BLM and Antifa riots last summer. Remember, all these people had said you needed to be locked into your home, you couldn't go outside, you couldn't meet with more than two or three people at a time, and yet as soon as these massive demonstrations and riots broke out, a lot of these same public health people justified it, and they said that racism was a public health concern. And so these people needed to be in the streets. And so, uh, so much of this is not science, Mark. It's political science. Uh, and that's what I think the CDC, unfortunately, has been operating under now uh, for many, many months. And what do you make of Joe Biden's effort to convince people to take the vaccine, to get the vaccine? He calls them. They're not so smart if they don't. Do belitt belittling people, turning them into second class citizens. Talking to them this way as President of the United States, is that effective? Is that a way to persuade people to do what you, you claim you want them to do, Governor? No, not only that, though. If you look, they're now saying wear masks. So they say you have to get vaccinated, otherwise you're stupid. 
But those who are vaccinated, you need to be be wearing masks um, because they're basically saying the vaccines don't work. Uh, So they have terrible messaging on all this. Um, And, you know, my view on this from the very beginning was when it when it first hit Florida, I said, we're going to give it to elderly first. And there was a huge demand for elderly. We go to nursing homes. We go to senior communities. We put in our retail pharmacies. We did a whole bunch of good stuff. But we said it's going to be available for all, but mandated for none. And we're going to give you the information and let you make a decision about what you want to do. So in the seniors in Florida, we have over 85 percent that have done it. But, you know, I was at nursing homes where we brought vaccine. Some of the residents decided not to, and that was their choice. We didn't make value judgments on that. Uh, We tried to provide information free of mandates, free of any type of coercion. Um, And I think what Biden is doing is basically sending the message that, you know, you're you're somehow less of an American, you know, if you make choices that are different than what they want. And there's Mark, there's some people who have medical conditions where they where they can't do some of these uh, uh, some of these vaccines. There's millions of Americans who've recovered from COVID and have immunity. And it is good, durable immunity. So you have all these different factors and they really don't show any recognition of that. But I think the more they get on their high horse, the more they try to browbeat people, uh, I think that, that they lose even more people. And I think anyone that's on the fence about it, um, you know, will, will, many of them will decide not to get it at that point. I don't have a lot of time, so I want to move into this BDS movement. Um, we have uh, uh, Unilever. We have uh, Ben & Jerry's, which is really involved in a hideous anti-Semitic attack on the state of Israel, going further than any BDS effort yet. And you have a law in your state. And what have you decided to do about this? So we have a law uh, against against BDS, boycott, divest, sanction of Israel. We also have other ways countries or companies could be viewed as as suspect if they're engaging with with other nefarious regimes or whatever. But when they're targeting Israel, it allows me to put them on a list uh, so that the state of Florida will not do investments with them. And so Unilever, I think this the state pension system had done investments in in the past. They would no longer be allowed to do. That. Now, there is a process. We give them the time to cure, and hopefully they do. But I saw, and I didn't look at it this afternoon, but earlier this morning I saw the Unilever stock has gone down dramatically. I'm Governor, gonna... hold on for one minute. I want you to be able to finish your thought. We'll be right back. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong. And I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead. A-M-A-C dot U-S. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. We are here with uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, and we had to take a hard break. So, Governor, the BDS movement um, and Unilever and Ben and Jerry's, for God's sake, who eats that crap anyway? But I, I'm just moving on. So anyway, um, they've taken a very, very anti-Semitic um, move against the state of Israel. And, uh, and you have a law in your state. You've triggered it. There's a process that you're going through. And you were saying something else. So uh, Florida did it. Uh, Texas has done some similar in New York and three, three of the four biggest states in the country. And we all, all have pretty big pension plans. And since then, 
uh, Unilever's lost uh, a lot in their stock price. And so Ben and Jerry's only represents a real small portion of the company. But for whatever reason, when they acquired Ben and Jerry's, they let them have their own kind of social awareness committee that makes these decisions. So Ben and Jerry's made this decision and they had the right to do it under the way the corporation structured, but it's really bad for Unilever. So I think they're going to have to do something to reel this in because it's just totally unacceptable, and it's going to hurt the company, uh, the large, the parent company, uh, with 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 what they're doing. But it's totally ridiculous, and we're going to bite back. And I'll tell you, we did this early in my tenure as governor against Airbnb. They tried something similar. We did it. We bit back. And Airbnb changed their tune. So I think Unilever is going to have to change their tune very shortly. Isn't it amazing that the President of the United States says absolutely nothing about this that I'm aware of? Is, isn't that shocking to you? With uh, You have these FBI uh, hate crime statistics, and uh, 50% of them are against Jews in this country, or 60%, whatever. It's an enormous number. And you saw what happened in this country uh, uh, when the uh, Hamas terrorists uh, started shooting missiles into Israel, I mean, in New York and Los Angeles, Orthodox Jews who are, ob- who are obvious by, by what they wear and their physical appearance, they're attacked viciously. Joe Biden doesn't say anything about this latest Unilever BDS movement move. What is that all about? It doesn't fit the narrative, Mark. The narrative that they want is, I mean, there's a couple different ones, but primarily I think they want our kind of conservative Trump voters are are effectively domestic enemies is what they're trying to, to accomplish. I mean, you see that with how they've tried to frame January 6th as like a 9-11 type attack on the country. You also see it how they have the FBI and some of the law enforcement focusing more on what they consider domestic extremism, which is basically just conservative dissenters from their orthodoxy, and they want to view them as the number one problem. I think when you start talking about anti-Semitism, uh, a lot of that comes from the left, and it doesn't fit the narrative that they're trying to to accomplish. And so it's um, Biden's not alone. I mean, corporate media is not talking about it, and they sweep it under the rug as well. Now, you're uh, you're in a re-election mode here. Do you know who you're running against yet? Not yet, but people can go to rondesantis.com and, and help us out. It's going to be a very important re-election campaign. Uh, there are two Democrats who are running. We'll see if any of them can get traction. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're on a mission to keep Florida free. Uh, we had a very tough race in 2018, uh, and if I had not won that, our state would be in dire straits. Uh, so now we have to really solidify Florida for a decade or more, and I know that ma- matters to you, Mark, because you'll be a Florida resident oh, yes. by the time I'm reelected. Oh, yeah. We're, we're moving in one, one family member at a time, but we're definitely doing it. Well, my best to you and your lovely wife and your beautiful kids, Governor, and be safe and be healthy, and thank you for what you do. God bless you, my man. Thank you. You too. Ron DeSantis. Let me tell you something about him. When he was in the House of Representatives, he was the same way. Very humble, plain spoken, solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. He's a veteran. He's a brilliant man. Went to Harvard. And when he went to Harvard, notice he wasn't corrupted. Uh, He is uh, just absolutely terrific. Now is the perfect time to rush into Amazon.com. Get your first edition of American Marxism, 40% off, 40% off before they raise the price. They always do. And it'll be delivered to you the next day. And they have available copies for you. Now, you know what I actually did the other day, Mr. Producer? I went on there and I ordered a bunch of books and sent them to certain friends and family members. You can just do that too. But the point is to get it, to read it, and to spread the word. So I'd encourage you to jump in now, American Marxism, on Amazon.com. All the retail stores are closed. If you're there tomorrow, retail, great. But tonight, if we can have a surge, people who are left out of this process, jump in now. You can see how people like the book. You can go and read the comments on Amazon, five stars. If you like it and you've read it, you can leave comments too. We would appreciate it. So we can rally the public, rally as many people as we possibly can. You've heard truck drivers call this show. You've heard teachers call this show. You've heard people from all walks of life call this show. You heard a gentleman call this show yesterday 
who called and said, you were right about these state voting laws. And he was dug in a couple of weeks ago that they are not denying anybody the right to vote. He said, I went and I studied it like you told me to. And then I looked and that every state, it's more liberal voting than it was before the virus. And then he said, I ordered your book and I read your book. We have a convert to liberty there, a convert who was promoting tyranny, who was swung into liberty. This happens a lot. It happens more than you think. And you can do this too. You don't have to have a talk show to do this. You can do this too. Trust me on this. Governor DeSantis is, uh, is, a, leading, is a leading light as far as I'm concerned. And uh, when you look at what's going on in this country now, when you compare what President Trump did with President Biden, you really have to be a partisan hack, and there's so many, of the American Marxist mode to reject the idea of the tremendous accomplishments, the tremendous accomplishments in the prior administration, and the utter and complete failures of the current administration. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Well, Mark, you're a partisan. I am that. I don't pretend to be a journalist and a partisan, but I think it's objectively true. All right, let's go. Erica, Derry, New Hampshire, XM Satellite. Erica, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. It's great to be on talking with you again. Thank you. Last time I called, we were actually talking about critical race theory being banned in New Hampshire. I'm a Mm. state legislator. Oh, right. Good for you. Yes. So I was calling today because I listened to your book on Audible, and it was excellent. I have a degree in economics, and I have to say your book is spot on, especially taking everything from Thomas Sowell's work and everything else that you were able to bring together and help people really understand what's happening today in our country. Thank you very, very much. And uh, did you learn things you didn't know before? Um, I did, and the biggest part was seeing that you were able to – I've been studying this stuff for years. Um, Mm -hmm. It's something that I've studied very extensively. And I saw that you were able to put all of the academic research together in a way where everybody can understand it and see exactly what's going on. Because that's been a really hard thing for people to translate what's happening up in the ivory towers to what's actually being done with us on Main Street and up in all of our capitals and town halls and school boards. Well, I appreciate that, because uh, that was quite a task. And uh, one of the things I did is I had an enormous number of books, as you can tell, and I went through them, and I tried to pick what I considered the most uh, iconic and most powerful for them on the left, and to then uh, take the, the sections that I thought were most important and then sort of narrow those down and then explain them. And then in the end of each chapter, tie it together. And then, of course, at the end of the book, say, we got a rally. Now, do you see things changing at all? You know, you're a state rep in New Hampshire. I don't think people are very happy with what's going on in this country. Do you? No, they're not. Um, I see that people are absolutely rallying. Usually after an election, things quiet down. But we've had people getting involved, staying involved, going to town council meetings, school board meetings. Um, We had the Wyndham audit for those uh, ballots that had been miscounted because of those folds. And we see people that are involved every day here, and we have some more opportunities for people to get involved. We actually have two special – we've already had two special elections. We're a 400-person house. We have two more special elections scheduled, and we might have another four. So there's opportunities for people to run and get involved and be involved both at the state level – as well as next spring for their town, cities, or school board. So it's a really exciting time because there's so much momentum carrying over, so many people that are still so involved, and I th- I'm hoping that we can really keep moving this forward. Mm-hmm. I think we will. I think there's a huge movement developing out there, and you can, you can feel it, and, uh, and pushback is coming. All right, Erica, I want to thank you. Don't hang up. We're going to give you a signed copy of American Marxism. Maybe you can share it with some of your fellow uh, state representatives and show them. Don't hang up. Thank you very, very much. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. 
More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead. A-M-A-C dot U-S. I'm going to be at the Reagan Library. I believe that's, when is that, August 14th, Mr. Bill? What date is that? Let me check so I'm not confusing people. 14th of August, or as we like to call it, August 14th. And uh, it's all sold out, except for a few availabilities for people who show up and they want to say hello and have a book signed. So there, if you live in that area, if you're from that area, you can still do that. I don't remember the Reagan Library uh, site link, but I think it's like reaganfoundation.com or something like that. It's easy enough to find out. But you should go ahead and check it out. Um, And if you're around, it's a wonderful Saturday. We have a wonderful time and be very, very pleased to meet you. And so I wanted to point that out. If I covered everything, I think I've covered everything. There's been a history of attacks on the U.S. Capitol that we've talked about, including by the Weather Underground. Forty-four years ago, actually it turns out it's, let's see, six, fifty years ago, a bomb planted in the bathroom in the Senate side of the Capitol building went off, causing hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage, but no casualties. News reports from the scene, this is from our buddy Philly Bump, show smashed windows, broken doors, debris on the floor of the Senate barbershop. It was planted by members of the Weather Underground, an anti-war group that claimed responsibility for a series of bomb attacks in the early 70s. These days, the group's most famous member is Bill Ayers, a retired college professor whose tenuous connection to then-candidate Barack Obama became an issue in the 2008 presidential campaign. Ayers was never charged in relation to any of the bombings. The 1971 bombing was not the first or the last that politically motivated violence struck the Capitol. Sounds to me like that was an insurrection, Mr. Producer, no? Now, Ayers obviously was associated with the Weather Underground organization. And he got off on a technicality, but he was associated with the organization. Why did the Democrat Party ever have a problem with Ayers' association with Barack Obama? Can anybody explain that to me? There, a bomb actually went off. It was planned. It was a weapon. A weapon. I'd say that's a pretty serious matter, wouldn't you, Mr. Producer? Wouldn't you, America? There are other people who who were very violent, attacked the Capitol building, and, and they got pardons. And we've been through that before. No such thing happened to the Capitol building this time. There was no explosion. The only shooting was the killing of the protester by a Capitol Police officer. People have not been charged with weapons violations in the building. We have a group in 1954, Puerto Rican separatists got into the House floor and opened fire with handguns. Five members of the House were wounded in the attack. Wow. And so, I thought I'd point all this out. Oh, it must be a diversion. No, it's called history. It's called context. Nobody excuses people who broke into the Capitol building. The problem we have is the lack of equal justice. May I call it equity? That we actually have people who assaulted 
police officers, burned buildings, attacked federal law enforcement in a federal courthouse for three months in a row, for which there were almost no consequences. That's the biggest problem. I don't know how many of them were put in solitary confinement for months. Do you? I don't know how many of them were charged with trespassing. Do you? We don't know their names. Last time I read something substantive about this, the U.S. Attorney's Office was dropping most of the charges. Remember that, Rich? Not so here. I don't know how many people they went out and found across the nation, sent SWAT teams to pick up, the U.S. Marshals to bring in, and were thrown in any jail, any federal prison. I assume if there were a lot, we would know about it. All right, folks, I'll see you on Hannity in 30 minutes. Please jump in, Amazon.com, get your copies of American Marxism. Let's keep rolling, baby. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, and emergency personnel, and we shall overcome. Yes, we shall. Have a great evening. See you on Hannity, and see you tomorrow. Be well. Be well.